welcome back to the automotive channel of all time. The Recto One is back in about the same condition as it left in, but with a lot shinier parts. Yeah, I'm sorry about the hilarious lack of updates. I kind of wanted to just spend a little bit of time, leave, leave it with the mechanic and let him do his thing. And then when I would get it back, I would do a big update because it didn't go the way we'd expected. Turned out the car needed more to get running than we both had thought. Um, what's different on the car? Um, when it left, last time you guys saw it, it had a junkyard Cadillac 390 out of a 61 sedan parts car from Brown Auto Salvage uh, near Dallas, Texas. Um, had the factory transmission, ran and drove, but with so much blow by that you couldn't even pour sea foam into the carburetor with it running, it would blow back onto the uh, windshield. So really bad running car. It only ran for about five minutes before starting to run so bad you couldn't even drive it. Uh, brakes were shot, all the brake lines were shot, the exhaust was shot, the gas tank was shot. Everything was just bad news because the car sat in a junk, uh, in like a barn since maybe between 1975, 1982, something around there. I haven't really pinpointed it, but late 70s, early 80s, I mean, before Ghostbusters, this car was sitting in a barn. So it's been quite a while off the road. So it needed a lot. Uh, front to back, we can just go through everything that's happened on the car the last couple months. Uh, front. Junkyard Cadillac, not a Cadillac Escalade motor. It was out of a Suburban uh, 60 LQ4. Uh, it was a 2004 model year motor, about 110,000 miles. Well, sold it had. Paired it to a 4L80 uh, transmission, the strongest of that era for Chevy. Um, front disc brakes. The brakes I wanted to get that were cheaper didn't really work out right. Um, they were they couldn't guarantee the fit, so we went with a Caddy Daddy front disc conversion kit. It comes with all the lines and hardware and master cylinder and booster and everything from the front, and then kept the stock brakes in the back. Uh, is that a good idea? Probably not, but I'm not made of money, so I didn't want to get disc in the back. Um, that's new interior, same. Uh, it's got a painless uh, motor control harness that I mentioned in the last video. Um, under the dashboard in the glove compartment. So sadly now I can't put my gloves and Twinkies in there, but that's not a big deal. Still have yet to finish all this. And the reason I haven't even touched any of this anymore is, well, I wouldn't be doing it right now instead of filming this crappy little video, but it's too rainy, so can't do anything with it right now. I need to sand the whole roof down to nothing and try to prevent some rust and do some primer, do some work, maybe weld up some holes Got to rip the headliner out in order to install the, all this crap. So I'm just going to do that later. Um, but these are these are the only ones still here, and they're not wired up yet. So we still got to do that. That's not there. Um, roof rack. We're still waiting on. I do have a company building one, but it's going to take a little while. He gave me a real good deal, but he is very busy. Um, but that's in the process. Just kind of got to wait a little bit. Um, brand new Hankook Dynapro HPT tires for the front, uh, all four. These are the exact same tires they used for Afterlife. Unfortunately, Discount Tire is dummy brands, and they put the white lettering on the outside, and they put the weights on the outside. And I just, I just don't, I just don't get it. I mean, they know the car it's going on, right? I mean, I, I don't know, man. They, and the mechanic specifically told them, uh, weights on the inside and white lettering on the inside. And they didn't do either, so that's fun. Um, Interior is still chock full of all the parts that go up on the top, full of all the paint, full of all the wiring I still need to do. Um, it'll happen soon, but it's just too rainy today to do it, so we're just filming a little update. Um, back brakes, still the exact stock rear axle, stock everything, and probably not the smartest idea. So far it hadn't caused any issues, but the brakes are definitely spongy. The only thing we're placing in the back is a the one soft line coming from the main brake lines down to the back axle and apparently that was enough to actually allow them to bleed. It might have just been clogged. So, let's have a look at the engine. So yeah, prepare to see a lot of shiny new things in here. Sorry, there's a there's a bit of contact. I'm gonna set you down. The alternator is contacting the hood, so it's kind of making it difficult to open it one-handed like you used to be able to. But you can see a lot of shiny new parts. Um, that's actually the same battery we were using on the old thing, so didn't have to change that. That's pretty cool. That is the brand new trans cooler hooked up to the 4L80. I've got the siren speaker just kind of hooked in, even though it's not ready yet. Uh, but yeah, a lot of brand new bone stock, 6 liter um, goodness here. We all, only changes we made was 
I would get these uh, hooker headers, the uh, ones I had bought that I was told would fit, uh, did not fit. These actually fit with a lot of room to spare, so really happy about those. Um, that's probably the best swap header you could even imagine getting for one of these. Uh, let's go down to the biggest point of contention with the Cadillac guys is these motor mounts so I was told that you need to notch the um, cross member in order to get this motor to fit and I do believe that that is correct still um, but the mechanic uh, has built his own Ecto-1 with an LS swap and he made his own motor mounts so he didn't have to notch anything and uh, he does have a 1963, so the hood's different. You know, there's a couple of differences. It's not the exact same car. But we do have some contact. So I, I'm not going to say that they're wrong because I'm sure it would be a lot nicer to have that. But we also do have a really nice um, angle with the drive shaft. We are able to get really good spacing with this new brake booster. So these mounts, although there is some contact with this alternator, I'm sure there might be a way to solve that. I haven't thought of anything yet. I was thinking maybe dremeling that a little bit or maybe modifying this bracket just to move it a scooch or something. I haven't really thought of something yet, but since this hood is coming off when I do the 1959 conversion, I'm not worried about that little cherry right there, but you can tell it is definitely hitting right there. So something would need to be done about this. The intake doesn't cause any issues, I believe, just because we cut this and uh, uh, goop sealed it. So that was, I think, hitting before, but it's not anymore. I don't think any of these are hitting. We did convert this. It came out of Suburban with a uh, electronic throttle or a throttle uh, drive-by wire. So we switched to a drive-by cable and that's just a bone stock off of a 5.3 or something. So not a huge swap. That, that's literally just nothing. But then you also do have to get the linkage and everything because the stock stuff is way too short. Hmm, other than that, yeah, I've still left all that on it. I might leave that until I paint the valve covers. So that'll be a while. Had to get a couple new coils because some of the coils and uh, some of the spark plug wires were broken from the junkyard. And they gave me spares, but even some of the spares were broken. Um, heater core is not hooked up yet. Just leaving that because it's more than likely it's either full of mouse or it's leaking somewhere. And I just don't want to mess up this brand new cooling system just yet with that. Um... Brand new radiator, a B Cool basic swap radiator, even though, what was the issue with this one? Um, oh yeah, this, the issue with this is the cheapest LS swap radiator. It does not come with a trans cooler, so you have to get a separate one. So if you were, if space is a concern for you, then I would recommend getting a radiator that has a trans cooler bung and whatever in it, just to save you a lot of heartache, because I have... I have a whole you know living room right here to spare and I can deal with it but if you can't then might as well just spend a little bit more money on that yeah that was a big takeaway from my last video the test drive um, you really get what you pay for with some of these yeah I mean look at you I but you really get what you pay for with some of these parts because how I wish I could have spent the more money and gotten this uh, disc brake for all four wheels. I didn't and my brakes are kind of, it's like I'm hauling a trailer behind me. I mean, they're okay. They do stop and everything works, but slowly. Um, you know, let's get underneath the oil pan. Um... Actually, we have a whole lot of clearance. I'm not worried about that in the slightest. Um, take a look over there. There's where the disc brakes. Uh, now, I don't remember. I'll have to check. Those motor mounts are, I think, I don't remember what company they were, but I think they were just on Jegs. And a lot of this stuff was purchased from Jegs. And Jegs is really good with, if you have something that's wrong, they will swap it out. And I believe, I know my headers was that situation. They hooked, they helped me out with that. They did the return, no issue. And I think the oil pan was the same situation because I seem to remember buying one meant for a Hummer and it wasn't enough. So we had to swap out for a different one. I think the Hummer one we were told would work just because it's so far back 
but it was too deep or something. I don't remember. That was literally three months ago, maybe. So it's been a little while since we had to deal with that. Why is that door open? I guess we can just start looking at the inside of the car. Floor plan floor is uh, still cheese, unfortunately. Wallace and Gromit would be proud of me and the work I've done. It's, like I said, we all know, everyone watching the channel knows that that's temporary. Um, like an idiot, I, I disassembled the seat yesterday when I was installing that um, window right there, which that was a full afternoon. But I, for, I forgot that my energy is not, you know, permanent, that I'm not just a walking stamina machine. So I gave up halfway through. So that's what I'm going to be working on when the video is over today. Still have the linoleum covering up the dash just because I don't want it to get sun faded. Inside is all full of the light bars and all the good stuff in there. Underneath, there's still a lot, of, there's a lot of bad metal down there, but back here, pretty much their back is good except for that one spot in the middle for the transmission hump um door panel in there so got to put back on really there's a lot of stuff in here is just stuff that i'm keeping around like there's a whole uh chrome rocker panel trim that is from the driver's side it's just kind of bent up and i don't need to use it right now because if i put that on then i'm gonna tell myself it's okay to have a rusty rocker for the next decade and then i'm never gonna rip it off so i really need to leave that rusty and looking over here you can see why i need to paint everything because there's a lot of rust that's showing through the white now and that white is new paint so it's pretty bad i still need to put that stripe on but not a huge deal that's honestly just like an hour-long job so i'm just waiting on the weather to get nicer probably this next weekend just weather permitting i'll throw that on start working on the roof still waiting on finding a window and a trim donor to put this molding in and to make this full wraparound windows so that might take a little while one thing i learned I found out while this was rusty um, from this, apparently with these, I filled it up at a gas station uh, last weekend, and when you're filling this up with gas, all the gas, like you have to fill it up slowly, because you fill it up too fast, it just starts puking out all the time. So I'm sure there's quite a lot of surprises in there for me, and I'm going to have a lot of fun when I cut this out at some point, but I mean, it's got to be done. I'll just do that when the quarter panels get swapped over. And let's see, is there any other changes? I mean, I could show you the exhaust, I suppose. Oh yeah, also brand new tank, brand new sending unit, all that. Stock axle, exhaust stops. Where does it stop? Exhaust stops right there. So, um, it was a cheap job just at a shop in Houston that the mechanic uses for his cars and they threw some exhaust on that sounds okay um i would prefer flow master i don't they i mentioned using flow masters i don't think they use flow masters but then i haven't crawled under to take a look i was hoping they would throw on some uh flow master 40 series or some super tens or something and they did not it sounds weird i suppose but when you're idling it sounds like a normal car that's fine I'm still waiting on the Cadillac front clip. Um, I went with a junkyard that I'll talk about later. I'm gonna wait until I get the parts just so none of you steal them from me and like buy them out from under me. But they're just waiting on getting them all palletized and shipped over. But the 59 front clip is in the works. Just uh, be patient with me. And uh, I guess we can go ahead and do a startup just so you can see the car operating, then maybe uh, move around a little bit. If you watched the last video, you saw that we had, do have some issues. It's not perfectly streetable yet. There's some overheating issues, and it didn't seem to want to shift or run properly before, but that might have gotten taken care of. Um, we'll just go ahead and do a quick startup. So the tune is a little bit off. I haven't found any vacuum leaks, but 
it runs a little tough it might honestly be missing on one or two I can't really tell just because I'm new to LS's but that's what this diagnosis process is going to be all about you see how it's kind of shaking a little bit just the teeniest little bit the car also shakes just because those motor mounts were modified and boxed in and they're very solid mounted so they're going to be shake they shake the car a little bit more than a normal mount should but kind of more race car application-esque uh let's see if i can just drive around the corner a bit Well, you can expect to see a lot more of this car in the next couple weeks. I'm probably just going to decide and spend every weekend working on this car until it's relatively done because I'm tired of just not posting stuff. I really miss posting, so I want to get into making some weekly uploads, but just stick around if you want to see it. Well, guys. I just want to be the one you love. I just want to be the one you love. Remember, I was going to say, I was going to use an expression, we have to keep our country gay.